Hello everybody, welcome to Quantum Catechesis. I'm Father Joe Krupp and you're not. This is our Thursday edition of Guest Who and we have a special guest. Uh, but before we get into that, just real quick, want to remind you about our schedule for this week. Uh, today, guest who? We have Vicki here, and she's going to talk to us in just a moment. But tomorrow, we're changing things. Just, just this won't happen often at all. Instead of doing our usual um, on the go with Father Joe, we're going to be on the no go with Father Joe. We're not going anywhere, right? Except my office. And then I won't be answering questions unless you want me to. Mostly, I'll be wrapping up our discussion on the Cristeros, uh, which uh, you very much seem to enjoy. So uh, with that in mind, I would love to hear um, your feedback on this. I love history, and I don't know how much you do, so I want to be careful, right? But if you want, one thing I'm actually a bit more knowledgeable of is the Dutch Jesuit missionaries who evangelized J Japan. I could actually cover a lot on that. Uh, and if you if you would like, gosh, I would love to go there. But let me know because I won't want to talk about history every time just because I like it. So anyway, so keep that in mind. I'm so fired up for tomorrow. We will wrap up Cristeros and uh, Viva Cristo Rey. Yeah. Uh, but today we're so very blessed to have Vicky with us. Now, here's the crazy thing. Shortly after I got here, my niece goes here to church, one of my nieces. And shortly after I got here, she started telling me about this amazing Bible study that she was going to. And as we got talking, I became convinced, gosh, I, I told her I want to go. And she was like, well, it's for women. <laughs> and I offered to wear a wig and Did my you? prettiest dress, mm -hmm. but uh, she said no. Black dress. Yeah, not a dress, a, a it's a cassock. A little black dress? Yeah, yeah, it's a little black dress. But it's a full-length black dress. It's a full-length little black dress. And it's not technically little because I'm very fat. But um, I went, you then invited me. We, Turns yeah, out Vicky's running you. it. We did have you there one day. And my God, all these wonderful women, led by the Holy Spirit through you, and I was just blown away. And... It was truly one of those moments where I recognized I'm going to be okay in my new home. Really? Yep. That uh, here's people who want to know. But that's yeah. usually, for me at least, the biggest issue with Catholics. Uh, is Or with anyone, I assume, but Catholics are who I know. It's, well, what, what do I have to know? Well, these were people who said, what do I need to know? And, uh, and fellowship. Yeah. You know, being with other people yeah. that love the Lord. Absolutely. It rubs off on you. It does. And it, it encourages does. you. You know, Coach D'Antonio had this scripture on his uh, wall in his office at MSU where Jesus went to school. And it said uh, that beautiful scripture passage, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. You know. But So Vicki, tell us about you, if you don't mind. Right over here. Tell us what we need to know to know you better. Okay. So I... Um, I'm married, going to celebrate my 39th wedding anniversary. Sweet, she was married when to she my, was 10. Yes, yes, to my lovely husband, Steve. And in fact, next week we're going to go have some fun for our wedding anniversary. So how nice. cool is that? Congratulations. Um, we have three children. I have a daughter who's 34, who's about to bear my first grandchild. Woohoo! However, she's all the way in Atlanta. So I'll be <sighs> spending a lot of time in Atlanta. I don't oh. know if I can allow that. I'll uh, pray about it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then I have twin sons. Um, and one is married, and I have a, my lovely daughter-in-law, Sarah, and they're 30 years old. They okay. celebrated their 30th birthday, and they all live together, believe it or not. Great. In Royal Oak. And um, so I am blessed with yeah. those things. And uh, I've been Catholic since I was 37 years old, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I and, and and I can't wait to get into that. I guess the uh, other thing is, by profession, I'm a registered dietitian, but that's kind of like slowly going back into the background. I, sure, my life really, I still do a little of that. Yeah, so, and and it is why I wore my um, body shirt. by bacon yeah. shirt. Um, and in fact, this is a side note. My nephew, I'm so proud of him. He's lost well over 110 pounds. Wow. Right, very slowly, mm -hmm. very methodically, meeting with the new dietitian and all of this. But he had one of these incredibly heartbreaking moments about two weeks ago. Um, we were making bacon because it was a day that ended in Y. And uh, he found out that, you know, he had switched to turkey bacon mm -hmm. because he hates America. 
And uh, what he found out, the difference, do you know this? Was insignificant? It's about two calories. Yeah. The and the amount of sodium. Between, yeah. The difference between turkey bacon mm -hmm. and the bacon Jesus gave us is about two <laughs> calories. So the moral of the story is... Eat bacon. Have a small amount of what you really want instead of a bunch of stuff you don't want. Right, cause because otherwise... we all know. What do we do? We eat the stuff we think we should eat. Yeah. And then we go to the ice cream that we were trying not to eat. We should have just had the ice cream and skipped all the other stuff. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. You know, life is short. Eat dessert first. Yeah. Oh, dietitians Jojo love right. good desserts, just so you know. Oh, yeah. You know, people think dietitians are like these people right? who don't eat anything good. No, those are vegans, and yeah. they frighten and confuse me. <laughs> they frighten me, too. Yeah. God didn't make vegans, as far as I can tell. <laughs> right? There's an animal for every eating habit, right? But you won't find that I can think of an animal that's like, no, thanks. I'm a vegan. Well, well, the bottom line for good nutrition and why I never wrote a book and made a million dollars was good nutrition encompasses variety. So eating different, lots of different yep. things. And then the hard one, moderation. Ugh, moderation. I do and if I had a... If I had a willpower moderation pill, then I would be really yeah. rich, and I could donate it all to like yeah. Here. yeah. A willpower moderation sure. drug. Yeah, wouldn't that be good? Oh, Jojo would, it would love be, it, and it would be good for so many things, not just food. Yeah, It'd be good for your prayer life. It, oh yeah, because yeah. I've met you know it's funny moderation. Uh, Saint Thomas Aquinas said mm -hmm. moderation is the key to everything, right? He said uh, at one point. Virtue is the appropriate distance between two extremes, right? When you're presented with two extremes, usually virtue is the middle point between them. And um, he did say, however, we should eat more bacon. Um, Jesus died to free us from our sins, from death. And lack and of pork. Bingo. There you go. Galatians 3. At seminary, we would have Galatians 3 parties <laughs> where we just ate pork. And we were like, Jesus... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so um, how long have you lived in Grand Blank? I have lived in Grand Blank about 14 years. Okay. And may I ask where you were before that? Uh, well, through a journey. But I grew up in Southfield, so I'm a more of a southern Oakland County girl. Sure. Um, we moved to um, Clarkston in the early 90s. Okay. And we took a year or two in Davison, and then we ended up in Grand Blank, and that's a whole other story. Oh, sure. So we won't go there. <laughs> I think that was really tied to your prison sentence, if I remember right. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Wait, that was confession, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so anyway, um, I see you as a spiritual leader in our parish, uh, not because you run around and tell everyone you're in charge, but because you strive for holiness and always seem willing to help people who want to strive for it too. And that's why I'm so glad you're here. And um, and I thank you, like of course, when it's my niece who's reading God's word, and she's a holy woman, she is, but you helped her take it up a notch. And uh, so I- Well, and you know what? I want to stop you there and just say that it isn't me. It's a whole team of people oh, sure. that did this. And really, the Holy Spirit is the guy behind yeah. it all because he just, dropped us all together and yeah. it happened. Yeah. So I am not going to take credit for it. I just I just show up and he does what he wants. Uh, that's exact. you just described priesthood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but I get paid. <laughs> See, and that, that yeah. is why I'm so glad. I don't get paid and I don't want to be paid. I am at the point where I just do this because I want to. <laughs> and you can go that? head into Atlanta but to I... see my grandkids. Peace Exit. out. Bingo. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, you know, one of the silver linings and we'll talk at the end a minute about like taking walking with purpose online through sure. zoom but one of the silver linings is i have this new grandbaby and i'm going to be able to still do it <gasps> shut online. up i didn't even think so, of that you know the sadness is that <sighs> that in-person thing is not sure. happening right now for a lot of it but you know god is good yeah yeah so and he's good at his job yeah, I, just, I spent yeah. a lot of my life trying to tell him how he should I do, do it too. and my story encompasses <laughs> Me telling him what I thought he should do and how yes. he, he did exactly what I asked for, but it didn't look anything like oh, what I expected. I li I'm serious. Dad actually heard me. I, I'll mumble at God through the day. And I literally, at one point, something happened, and it, it was so unimportant. But it literally prompted me to just go, 
all right, Lord, you can keep your job. <laughs> and then Dad just thought that was the funniest, but it was true. It was like, man, you're good at this. I'm not. <laughs> well, you know, he's got it, and I'm not, and thank God for that. Yes, every day. And, uh, well, I guess if you're comfortable with this, I would love to hear your story of how Jesus snagged your heart. Okay. Uh, are you, I can do that. Yeah? Okay. And as you're listening and enjoying this beautiful woman of God, don't hesitate to send in your questions. Um, and if uh, we ask three of your questions, you'll win a toaster oven signed by Pope Francis. Really? That's not true. No. <laughs> I, I say these things. And then I tell people, no, it's coming. You haven't got it yet. Mm -hmm. And then I blame the Italian mail system. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Which if you've been to Italy, totally viable. That's Probably. totally uh, possible. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so tell us okay. about how... Well, I yeah. will start my story with... Uh, <clears throat> I was born into a Presbyterian family. My okay. parents were Presbyterian. And I was baptized as a baby as a Presbyterian. Um, and we went to... I went to Sunday school as a little girl. Sure. Um, so fast forward to about fourth grade. I, I'm in a public school. And the Baptist ladies had a Bible club. They came in after school. You know, you could stay for art club, but one of them was Bible club. So this is a public school in 1968 or 9. Sure. Right in Southfield, Michigan, right? So they would come in and, you know, long before technology, they had these flannel boards. Okay. So oh, sure. if, you were, uh, if you had ever grown up years ago in a Protestant church, Sunday school involved like this felt board, yeah. and then they'd have these little figures of Jesus and, you know, shepherds and stuff, and they had, like, felt on the back, and they would stick, so yes. a flannel board. So yeah, the Baptist ladies banners. came in, and they would lead this little Bible club, and every week they gave us a little scripture card. Okay. And if you went home and memorized that little card, and you came back and you could recite it, yeah. you would get candy. So, you know, a good motivator. Yeah, or bacon. But that's, like, the very beginning of, for me, of, like, love of scripture. Yeah. And I am so thankful because I can't remember squat anymore. But, mm. you know, trying to memorize a verse, like I've been trying to rem memorize a new favorite verse of mine, whatever's true, whatever's pure, whatever's mm. lovely, whatever's gracious. Um, if there is anything worthy of praise, if there be any excellence, you know, think on these things. Yes. What a good verse for these times. Oh, my sense. But, like... I am sitting there with a card, pure, lovely, like just the words in order. When I was eight or ten, you know, that was like that. Sure. Oh, I'm So there. the good news is that a lot of scripture was laid down into my heart oh, when yeah. I was young enough that the Holy Spirit pops it in your head when you need it. And I can't remember chapter and verse where it comes from, but Google's really good at that. Oh, Google's awesome. So you just start typing in whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, and poof, Philippians 4, 8. Nice. And is that what that is? Yeah. There you go, folks. Look up Philippians 4, 8. So when you good get, verse I for these that. times because, mm. you know, we can become so negative and yes. so dark, you know, yeah. So let us think of what's good, lovely, pure, gracious, holy, you know. Yeah. But anyway, so, so in fourth grade then, as a Protestant, you are invited to make Jesus your Savior. Yeah. So as a fourth grader, I prayed to make Jesus my savior nice and so we'll fast forward you know i don't ever remember a day where i didn't believe that god existed like yeah. i just faith is a gift and i don't understand why he gave me such a big gift but he did um so moving forward to now four, 14 years old i'm in high school and my parents aren't going to church very regularly but i am um i'm in a youth group at the church and i just found myself one day one evening in my bedroom on my knees surrendering my life to Jesus, like wow. making him what in Protestant terms we would call Lord of my life. Yes. Saying like, you be in control, I give it all to you. Um, and what's interesting about that is like Presbyterians don't pray on their knees. It's just not a thing, right? Sure. Um, but I, there I was alone in my bedroom. Must have been a Holy Spirit thing, you know, in tears. Yeah. At that point in time, I didn't even know that tears were a gift of the Holy Spirit. But um, so, you know, I go to bed and the next morning I woke up. And everything really was different. Oh, I'm back. It was like the Holy Spirit came in a way that night. And I wouldn't have been able to tell you at that age what was going on. But I all of a sudden had a passion to share Jesus. And I had a passion for scripture, like reading the Bible. And I had like a youth 
Living Bible. And I have this thing today, and it is ratty and ragged and, you know, underlined and highlighted. and oh, sure. You know, and just I was consuming it. And so I'm in like ninth grade, eighth grade, eighth, ninth grade-ish, um, in a middle school, in public middle school. I started a Bible club at the public middle cool. school. After yeah. school. And just very involved throughout my teen high school years with Bible studies and, and just sharing Christ, you know. Um, so fast forward, I married my husband who was a cradle Catholic. Okay. Um, at 22, I got married to him. And when we were dating, I would go to Mass with him. And, um, you know, we got married in a Presbyterian church with a priest and a minister. Yeah. So um, that was really nice because years later when I became Catholic, I already had a sacramental marriage. Yeah, you were good to go. Marriage, right? Um, so, you know, as the years went by, um, he is a police officer and worked a lot of hours, worked a lot of nights, um, worked a shift where he worked like drunks, Friday nights, Saturday nights. And before you know it, like he wasn't home until like six, seven in the morning on oh. Sundays. And so he wasn't always going to church. At this point I had three small children. Um, I've been married like 10-ish years and I felt spiritually very alone. And I began to beg the Lord would he please just let me serve him with my husband? Yeah. Of course, I had a big plan in my mind about how, like, at this point, I am now in an evangelical Protestant church. I've left Presbyterianism. I have become more Bible-based. You know, yeah, I wanted oh, something sure. with more meat. Um, and so I just began to just pray that prayer, and for several years, okay? And one of the things um, that I know from my experiences it's a bit of a mystery, but why does God ask us to persevere in prayer for so long? But, but, yeah. you know, there is a scripture verse that says you don't have because you don't ask, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I began to pray this, and my husband all of a sudden got promoted to a sergeant position, and for the first time in all of our marriage, he was actually going to be home at night and on weekends. Nice. So I was going to this evangelical non-denominational church, and I said to him, would you go to church with us? And he said, yes. So off we went to church. And this, for people that are Catholic, you know, this is different. You take your Bible with you. The pastor preaches a 45-minute sermon. Um, it might be topical or it might be based on a whole book. So he might go for a whole month on the book of, you know, Habakkuk or something. Right. Okay, and you bring your Bible and you open it up. Which is a and, tough one. Yeah, and in <laughs> fact, that was actually one of the books that they were doing at the time. Ooh. So my husband loves history. Yeah. And um, he was really enjoying this. Groovy. So to keep the story moving, um, he'd been going to church with us maybe six months or so every Sunday and enjoying this and... Um, and if I just want to back up for a minute when sure. I first started going to that church like about a year and a half before all this took place I went to a, a Wednesday night Bible study as a new person attending that church and after the Bible study the pastor led it I went up to him and I had said to him I want to join your church Yeah. but I'm not going to join until my husband joins with me sure so put me on your mailing address or mailing list you know and I'm going to be coming and but I'm going to join with my husband. Nice. So now, you know, move forward. We're a year and a half into this, and Steve's going to church with us. And and his we get a phone call on a Tuesday that his mother has a brain tumor. Mm. And to make a long story short, he's the oldest child of four sons. That just really rocked his world. Yes. As you really understand what when you went through things with your yeah. mom. That rocked his world. And so that was a Tuesday. And this is where God's in the little details, because... On Friday, no, Saturday night, my twin three-year-olds are up woofing their cookies all night. And when that happens, what does mom do? She lays on the end of the bed with a bucket, right? I okay. mean, three-year-olds yeah. don't get out of bed and oh, yeah. use the restroom. Um, so I am up all night with them. They're sick. And it's Sunday morning now. Yeah. And he's been regularly going to church with us. And I'm the churchgoer, though. Sure. So even if... They were sick. Normally, I would go to church. He would stay with the kids. That's because I go to church. Right. But I went downstairs. Our bedroom's on the downstairs. The kids are upstairs. I come downstairs, and I said to him, would you like to go to church this morning, and I'll stay with the kids? 
That's a small detail. But what happened was, now remember, his mother has been through this sure. crisis. And we have gotten her to a better doctor. And, you know, we're at a place where we're moving the health care along by the end of this week. But would you like to go to church and I'll stay home? And he said yes. Nice. And he went and he found the pastor and he explained, you know, the crisis with his mom. And they surrounded him with love, mm. prayed for his mom. The pastor called his mom, visited his mom. And, and his parents are Catholics, right? pastor visited his mom at the hospital um, and just the point about me not being there was God had to take me out of the picture yeah. because if I had gone to church with him that morning I would have gone to the pastor I would have asked yeah. for the prayer I would have done and I needed to be put in the background so that he could go and do that yeah absolutely so now we'll fast uh. forward six months after this Mom has not had a brain tumor. She's had an aneurysm. She's had surgery, and she's doing pretty good. Oh, praise the yes, Lord. Yes, So God is good. And, you know, the morning of her surgery, I brought this one thing I wanted to read to you because I used to keep, in Protestant terms, we called it a, a morning holy hour. Or, well, no, Catholic is holy hour. Yes, Protestant devotion. terms is quiet time or oh, devotion, quiet time. right? Yep. And I speak two languages. I speak <laughs> Protestant and oh, Catholic yeah. bees, okay? But the morning of her surgery... The Lord gave me this verse, and it was, This sickness will not end in death. Ooh. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. And that's John eleven four. Mm. And his mom had been praying for him. And okay. she offered all that suffering that she went through for him. And I guess for me, because I came into the Catholic Church, and all of her grandchildren became Catholic, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so God is in the details, is yeah. he not? So fast forward, mom's doing good, and the pastor says... We're going to have a new member class. And I say to Steve, will you go with me? Yeah. So it's a series of like four to six Sunday mornings meeting the pastor's study before church. So we go to the, the classes. And the cute little thing my husband says about non-denominational things is every pastor is his own pope. You know, Because oh, yes. you make your own rules, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and the man was very good-hearted. I mean, he's a great historian, great Bible teacher, loves Jesus, right? Mm. But in some of these classes, he said some things that just didn't sound right to my husband. He said things like, well, you know, Catholics worship Mary. And, you know, Christ is re-sacrificed at every Mass. Some really typical anti-Catholic sure. stuff. Okay? Right. And my husband, who was a cradle Catholic, who he would term the late 60s and 70s where he, where he had CCD as kumbaya Catholicism. Oh, yes. I'm okay, you're okay, we're all okay, let's oh, hold hands, yeah. and we didn't really teach much. And make some felt banners. Oh, well, for sure. Um, so, you know, he's been raised in kumbaya Catholicism, and um, but he's listening to these things, and he's thinking, this this isn't right. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't sound, I'm sure that's not right. Um, well, we finished the classes, and I'm like, sign me up. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm joining. Yeah. And he says... I'm not so sure. You know, I really need to investigate this a little more. So he gets an appointment with the pastor and goes for a private meeting. And the pastor tells him, of course, just read the Bible. It's all in there. Yeah. Um, but he comes home from that meeting, and he is different. Yeah. The next morning, he is reading scripture, and he is like, he is just... He's in. He's in. Okay? So this is 1996. The yes. Internet is very young. Yes. He goes out to the internet and types in Catholic. And thank the Lord, what comes up is Catholic answers. Yeah, they when you have typed that Catholic locked down. Yep, down, I remember you that You got Catholic well. answers. Yep. So you got, you didn't get any wonky weird no. stuff. You got Catholic answers. So he wow. begins to really study the things that the church teaches. Yeah. So he's reading the Bible and he's studying the things that the church teaches. And I'm like, Hey, God, this isn't what we planned. Like, I had a plan. Didn't you hear me? He's becoming Protestant with me. <laughs> and um, that wasn't looking like that was going to happen. So what was very interesting, another detail. This is the day of cassette tapes, right? Oh, sure. Okay, so I have a cassette tape. Protestant minister becomes Catholic. And it is Scott Hahn, the yeah, Presbyterian minister, who became one. Catholic. Okay, My friend at work had given that to me a couple years earlier, and I had listened to it, and I thought, well, that's interesting. I, I, you know, Put it on the shelf. Yeah, it doesn't apply to me, but interesting. Um, so, 
Holy Spirit moment. We're getting ready to go to bed on a Saturday night, and I just was prompted to pull that tape out. My lady. And we had a little cassette player in our bedroom. Yep. And I said, I have something you should listen to. Yeah. I pop it in there. We lay in bed. We listen to it. Go to sleep. Next morning, we get up, and me and the three kids, all dressed, because, you know, Protestants dress up. To oh, yeah. Church. So we are fully dressed at the door. How you doing? Waiting for Dad. Waiting for Dad. Waiting for Dad. Where's Dad? <laughs> he comes out. And he says to me, I'm not going to church with you today, and I don't think I'm ever going back there. Oh. We only lived a, mile, a block from a Catholic church. Oh. I go off to the evangelical church with the three kids, kind of like boo-hooing all the way. He goes down to the Catholic church. Okay. And the regular pastor isn't there, and there's an old priest filling in that Sunday. And I wasn't with him, so I don't have all the details. But what I do know is that after Mass, he goes to the sacristy, finds the priest, and basically shares his story of what's going on. Yeah. So this is 1996. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, the new catechism, which yeah. isn't so new anymore, is just out. It's been out about right. a year in English. Right. The old priest says, get the catechism. It's all in there. So he's got the Bible, it's all in there, the catechism, it's all in there. Yeah. Right? And what is Catholicism is not scripture alone, it's scripture and tradition, exactly. right? Exactly. So we go looking for a catechism, and he's getting the catechism, he's studying that. And, and of course, that's what he was doing on Catholic Answers. Oh, sure. And, and he was printing out all these articles. I mean, we have binders <laughs> with, you know, good yeah. Catholic teaching. Yeah. Um, so now I'm really like, Lord, like, I don't really want to be Catholic. Um, I've been praying, though, and what I did pray, now I looked back on it, I prayed that my husband and I would be spiritually on the same page, that I would serve the Lord with my husband. <laughs> silly, silly you. I didn't say God make him a Protestant like me. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, the Scott Hahn tape, the Protestant minister becomes Catholic. He was Presbyterian. So yeah. was my background was Presbyterianism. And I trusted that that he was a good teacher, you yeah. know. So, well, I got some more tapes. So we actually have a bookcase at our house that's like, you know, seven feet tall and this wide, full of sets of cassette tapes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the next one I happened to get, and like the Holy Spirit was in charge of what I got, you know, um, the Lamb's Supper. Oh, that is his best. Well... Okay, so wow. I have read the Bible. I am 37, 36 years old. I've been reading the Bible faithfully since I'm 14. Okay, I've read through the whole things a number of times. Um, so I listened to this tape, John 6. You know, unless you eat my body and drink yeah. my blood, you have no life in you. It was like scales fell from my eyes. Mm. I knew it was true. I knew that the Eucharist was really the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. And you know what? Once I knew that, yeah. How could I not right. be Catholic? I right. mean, so now I have this hunger for the Eucharist. But I still have a lot of concerns. Oh, sure. <laughs> I do. A lot of concerns, you know. It's like, so in my prayer time, it's like, <laughs> Lord, if I become Catholic, what is going to happen, first of all, selfishly to me? Where am I going to find fellowship? Like, I'm in these little prayer groups and Bible studies. Sure. and Like, you know. The little bit I knew of the people I knew who were Catholic, <laughs> they didn't have that. No. We, so. we did, I want to be clear, we did have bingo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in uh, our defense, we, we had You had beer bingo. and bingo. Yes, mm -hmm. in that order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, and then the next thing was, what's going to happen to my children? Because in the church that I was raised in, we had a fabulous youth group. Oh, sure. And, you know, it was just... If I would think about what I wanted to do in high school, it wouldn't be a high school reunion from the high school. It would be a reunion from those kids sure. in that youth group. There was like 40 of us. Yeah. And we just had a tremendous time. Yeah. Um, so what would happen to my kids? What would happen to me? Um, those were like the big things. Where am I going to get fellowship? But I did say to the Lord, I know that you're in the Eucharist. So out of obedience, yeah, yeah. I will do this. But... Like, here's my list. And actually, I went back to my little prayer journal this morning real quick yeah. just to get it fresh in my mind. And I had the list. Oh, sure. Here's yeah. the points, God. What you going to do about it? 
Because you don't have, because you don't ask, right? Oh, I, I got you. Okay, so so my biggest concern then, and, and if you've ever listened to people's conversion stories, if you've listened to The Journey Home or any of those sure. on EWTN, people usually have one big bugaboo, like it's yeah. Mary or it's, yeah. for me, it was justification. Oh, sure. What, how are we saved? And I really believed that the Catholic Church taught that you could be good enough to go to heaven. And you know, I had a real problem with that. Because if you could be good enough to go to heaven, then why did Jesus go through all of that for us? If I could just go. be good and go to heaven, then all that Jesus did was like a waste of suffering. Um, so I got the Scott Hahn tape that was about justification. Woohoo! And what I learned was that we are saved, Catholic Church teaches, we are saved by Christ. Yeah. Completely and totally. And but right. God loves us so much, he allows us to cooperate in our salvation. Yeah. So, like in, in Protestant background, you know, you pray the prayer and you're saved. And then you're just saved. Yeah. And, yes, you may journey closer to the Lord, but you're saved. I mean, there is such a richness in the Catholic Church that... Anything good that they have in, in the Protestant world they came from comes from the Catholic Church, and they have lots of good. And I am oh, yes. so grateful for the scripture study and the fellowship I had there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't God had a plan. Obviously, oh, I had yeah. to be there first so that I could be here now. Yep. I believe that. Um, but it's like, so now, you know, there was other things, but now that I knew that, but to, just it's funny. So what does a Protestant do if she's going to look for a Catholic church? You just start going to all the Catholic churches and find one you like. <laughs> oh, God help <laughs> you, Because that's woman. what Protestants do. We shop. Oh, right? yeah. Okay, so we would go to the local Protestant church, the one down the street, the one around the corner, the one over there, the one over there. And I would go in, and I don't want to offend anybody, oh, my Catholic the brothers and sisters that are listening to this, but I would go in, and I would sit there, and I would cry. Because, honestly, I didn't understand the Mass. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to give you my impression because it's really funny, but it's kind of sad. Um, I walked in, and the one thing that bugged me a lot was that Catholics didn't take off their coats. <laughs> now, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> why, why? But it's like they aren't staying long enough to even take off their coats. <laughs> well, and Father calculated how much money he'll save by having the thermostat at well, seven. Yeah, you know, see, Protestants give money. Catholics true. give time. Well, you know, speaking of that, during this last winter with Walking with Purpose, we'd go in there and the yeah. boiler was like off. And it's like, we need to tell... Father Joe to put another lump of coal on the fire. Yes, and he won't. Yeah, it's, you know, one of my buddies, if I may, it was so funny. He was a Protestant minister who became Catholic. And he said, truly, and I, it was just, he said, if Catholics donated to their church like Protestants do, you would never need another fundraiser. Oh, well, you wouldn't need that. Every though. need would be, you wouldn't need anything. And, <laughs> but one of the things like that blew him away. Was he doing the finance council at his church? He was like, the billion ways that Catholic priests and finance councils bleed trying to figure out how to save money. If we put that thermostat at 68, we'll get yelled at. You go, you do an equation. I'll get yelled at this much, and I'll save this much. And then you, it's know, worth you it. make a decision. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just a little. <laughs> There's a scale, and you just have to meet in the middle there. Well, so. and that's how, like, when I was in Hudson, what blew me away is you couldn't swing a dead cat without hitting a Protestant, uh, a Baptist church. And they were all different forms of Baptist. Oh, yeah. And each one in this poor town where the average median income was $30,500 a year, the average median income, each one had a pastor who had a salary. Right. I mean, a salary. And I was like, this is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, like the well, kind of salary you know, where you can raise five kids. Part of the problem is we <laughs> haven't shared with people that, you know, we are called the tithe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, yeah, there I am in the church crying because shivering. I can't find the one that I... You know. Well, and it just appeared. It's it's so judgmental on yeah, I get you. But it I just appeared you. that they showed up at the last minute. Yes. They wore their coats. They yes. mumbled through everything. I like yes. praise and worship. <laughs> uh, they mumbled through everything. Mm -hmm. And then they ran out of there as fast as they could and practically killed people in yes. the parking lot to leave. Yes. And, you know, that just made me cry. <laughs> 
so I do have to say, out of obedience to the Lord, I did this. But, oh, yeah. Like, what I could see wasn't like what I was looking for. My buddy lived next door to a Catholic church. This is a true story. And all during our time at U of M, I was trying to evangelize him. And this is honest to God. I promise he said this, and I'll never forget it. He said, Joey, I live across the road from a Catholic church. And when it doesn't look like someone phoned in a bomb threat after your masses, then you'll have some credibility. <laughs> he said, but in the meantime, all of a sudden, the church just, everybody's fleeing. Like it's like someone phoned in a bomb threat. And he goes, when that doesn't happen, I might listen to you people. <laughs> well, and you know what I, have I came to understand? Just think yeah. about it. In a Protestant church, you don't have Jesus physically present there. Yeah. He is not there. In the, in the Eucharist. Eucharist. Yeah. So you come in and you socialize with your neighbor. And Christ is present in your neighbor, right? Sure. So everybody's talking. It's like before a football game in a Protestant church. Yeah. When you go into a Catholic church, there should be reference. If you're in the presence of the king, you should know you're in the presence of the king and you shouldn't be talking to your neighbor, right? Right. But I mean, I didn't understand any of that. Sure. So, um, but so the rest of the story is that he more than met every mm. need I had ever Praise listed God. and more than I ever imagined. And I walked into just the most magnificent thing. I, I walked into the communion of saints. I yeah. didn't know anything about the saints. And to mm. begin to read the lives of the saints, and what I found from that is you read some things that like Catherine Siena prayed or said or you know, Teresa of Avila. And it's interesting because the Holy Spirit was really my teacher of what got dropped in front of me. So sure. Teresa of Avila is the first saint I ever met. Yeah. And oh, she was cool. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> Just loved love her. Like, you know, like, oh. I loved her thing when her wagon is stuck in the mud and she tells God, no wonder you have so friend, so, <laughs> so friends. friends if you treat them like this. But, <laughs> but Carmelite spirituality. Oh, sure. The depth of it's the intimacy. Lovely. So in the Catholic Church, I have been able to grow in intimacy with Christ in a way I would have never grown in a Protestant church. So, and then the whole idea of um, redemptive suffering, which people don't want to talk about it, but suffering's real. You yeah. don't have to go find it, it finds you. Yeah. But there's nothing wasted in Catholicism. I mean, that we can unite our suffering with Christ for the church, you right. know, um, or for my right. specific need of my child. I mean, there's power in that. There and is. I thought that was something you avoided. Right. You know? So, um, you know, the communion of saints and, and the sacraments, because just think of what we have to offer to someone. I yeah. mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I'm eating and drinking the body of Christ. I go to confession, and not only do I hear with words Jesus tell me that I am forgiven, but I get grace to yes. change my life. And I physically have seen that change take place. Oh, yeah. You know, you start with a little list, and it's always the same stuff. Yeah. And then slowly over some time, some stuff is off the list. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, it's remarkable. Yeah, and then even just the fact that, you know, marriage, the grace that's there in the sacrament of marriage. Um, so I heard someone say this, and I've stolen it, so I'm just going to be truthful that I stole this, that I was a child of the king, and I lived in this mansion. But I was living in his basement and I didn't even know there was an upstairs. So that's not an original thought to me, but it so summarizes. Like in Catholicism, God is so much more wild yes. and big oh, than yeah. I ever knew he was in yes. my previous life. And, you know, you stop to think of what we believe. Yeah. It's pretty radical. Oh, I, I had a buddy <laughs> who, I, I think I shared this on the show earlier, one of my friends, uh, kind of started in my presence and not being cruel but saying something making fun of mormonism a bit and i said look i you know i don't think mormons are christians i said but to be clear we believe that god entered a virgin uh and she retained her virginity after she gave birth to god and that he needed his diapers changed that he you know uh, all these things and then he gave us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink and he was killed and then he rose from the dead but freak don't freak out he's coming back mm. i said we don't get to call anything anyone believes weird 
Right. Yeah, e ever. And actually, right. I don't think most Protestants even know what Catholics believe. Yeah. Oh, no. The fact I mean, that, that yeah. Catholicism taught that this was actually the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, I didn't know that. And I was kind of hopping along with my husband at Mass way before I ever became Catholic. Sure. Um, and that's pretty wild, you know? You know. The whole story is wild. Oh, I, I was in, uh, I'll just say, a third world country. And sitting with someone, and, and it's funny, like if you go to Europe, and a European asks you where you're from, and you're an American, you need to say Canada, right? <laughs> because if you say you're from Canada, they'll complain about their country. They'll tell you that the country and everything that's wrong. If you say you're an American, they'll tell you their country is perfect and America is awful, right? That's, that's what they do. I don't know what this is, it's so bizarre. Oh. But third world country, a lot of times, if you can engage someone, it, in my experience, I've been to a ton of them, over and over you hear, I just can't believe what you have and how you don't even understand what you have as Americans. And I, I think spiritually, that's what I experience with Catholics. Mm -hmm. Like a hunger just to sit them down and say, you don't know what you have. Right. You don't... 2,000 years, truly an unbroken chain uh, of saint and sinner to saint and sinner to say just that. We, don't, we have no idea what, like Jesus said it, generations longed to see what you see and didn't get to see it, longed to hear what you hear and never got to hear it. And, and I, I, you know, I praise the Lord for the beautiful habit the holy habit of I'm going to church, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. I I think it is the keyest, the most key, the keyest. I don't know. The biggest first step oh, is absolutely. I'm in, mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna get my butt where it's supposed to be, right? But there's so much Gosh. past that. There's so much more, and yes. people don't know. Oh. And so, you know, actually, I have my own little theories. So. One of the biggest groups outside the Catholic Church is ex-Catholics and Protestant churches. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is my theory, and forgive me, this is not something the church teaches, but my theory, okay, my theory is that baptism works. Yes. So when you are baptized, God puts that mark on your soul, and the Holy Spirit is there, and he's waiting to be cooperated with. Yes. And so if you just are going to church every Sunday and never doing anything other than just sitting there like a rock on Sunday morning and the letting it children. kind of fall off of you that that never gets activated yeah so then they go down you know somebody invites them to a Protestant church and there's a little more liveliness there sure um, and in fact my very best friend had been an ex-catholic that she was my prayer partner and stuff before I became Catholic and you know she said and this isn't true, but she said, I never heard the gospel in the Catholic Church. Well, she heard the scriptures read, but she never in her heart heard right. the gospel. Yeah. Um, so they leave looking for something to feed them because baptism works. It's waiting. The Holy Spirit's there. He's waiting for you to cooperate with him. Yes. So, you know, when I entered the Catholic Church, the Lord gave me a mission. Yeah. Clear as a bell that I was to bring Catholic women into intimacy with him. And so that's why I lead Bible studies and prayer groups and because that's what the Holy Spirit's asked me to do. And you know what? It's so much fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is so, serving God is so What's much a riot? fun. I just love to show up and see what he's going to do today. It's a Open your mouth and see what he has to say today. Yeah, it's a roller coaster in the best way possible. You don't know the next turn. You don't know the next up. You don't know the next down. And you might some you might be scared and angry sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if someone took that roller coaster from you, you'd be lost. You know, I. One of the things I an image I, I will share sometimes with Catholics who are either about to wake up or about to walk away because almost every Catholic who gets in the fight hits that moment. Mm -hmm. And I always give them this image, and I mean it, and it was from when I was 19, and we were playing in the city league, uh, and I, I don't know what happened, right, but a play unfolded, and I got confused, and I did the worst thing you can do on a football field. 
I stopped and I started looking. I got hit so hard that it separated me from my senses. And why? Just because I stopped and started trying to figure out. And when you take a Catholic who's at Mass every Sunday-ish or is half in the fight, they're the person standing on the football field. They experience none of the benefits of the game, none of the excitement, none of the hitting and getting hit. All they do is randomly get run over by somebody. Um, and they go, I hate football. And I know that's the <laughs> stupidest example ever. It's like, no, you hate standing still while everyone else is playing football. Mm -hmm. And all that gets you is hurt. And I literally mean it. All it gets you is hurt. And if you walk away from that and someone gives you a video game of football, well, you'll enjoy that. But the whole experience is lost. There's a depth that you missed. That's two-dimensional. Being on the field is three-dimensional. And I don't know if this may, if I'm explaining it well, but I've explained this to people. I'm like, you just got hit by a bad person probably, but because you were standing still. You, you weren't into the motion of the faith. You, weren't, you, didn't know, you don't know the rhythm of the game. Mm -hmm. It's just standing there. You're going to get run over by people either scoring a touchdown or trying to maim someone who's scoring a touchdown. That's it. That's all you can do is get hit. And I think that's why we get so many wounds in church. You know, uh, yeah, anyway, I, that's... Well, you know, the bottom line is that there comes a point where you have to say to God, okay, I really want to know you. Yeah. yeah. And how do you do that? I mean, as soon as you do that, as soon as you give him the littlest tip of your finger, he'll come. Oh. He'll come big time. Yeah. But you have to. He's a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on you. So if you're happy to just sit like a rock, he'll let you be. Yeah. But when you give him that, he comes. And so that's really why I like like walking with purpose because the whole point of this is to create a, a time of prayer and scripture study each day. Um so walking with purpose each week, there are five days that are little 15 to 20 minute study times. And we're really trying to create that opportunity to grow in your relationship with God. So you can know uh, lots of things about God, just like I could read a book about Abraham Lincoln and tell you lots about him, but I don't know him. I've never sure. met him. Sure. So how do you meet God? Well, you have to spend time with him through prayer, through the, his word. So that's really why. I, and, and the other thing that I know for myself is that I need other people. You know, God created us to be social people. God himself is a trinity, right? Yeah. So he did not create us to sit in a vacuum by ourselves. He created us to encourage each other to fellowship. And it's through that fellowship and listening to other women who have read the same thing you've been reading. When you share it with them, it's so much richer. Yeah. And if I'm if I'm at a you know parish and I and I'm a young lady or, or a lady who wants to begin, maybe can I start a walking with purpose? Oh, uh, absolutely! This is a national what, program. Would, oh, so walking with purpose can be done um, as a parish level, which we have done. It can be done just a you could just go online to walkingwithpurpose.com, get a book, just do this yourself. And in fact, this year. Because of the whole COVID thing, we are going to offer Walking with Purpose via Zoom. Okay. So if, uh, and we'll be advertising that in the social media of Holy Family, probably within the next week, it would be on their website and their social media stuff. You can sign up, get the book. You can either be in a group where we're going to meet on Wednesday mornings um, or Thursday evenings, and we would assign you to, we'll all meet as a group, like we're in a big room at the church, and then we're going to break into our breakout rooms, which are like the tables. Sure. So we're going to do that. But I was talking to a number of moms, and like this time right now, if you have small children, and I'm just thankful to God, mine are all grown up right now. But like, you know, my kids are going to school. They're not going to school. They're playing soccer. They're not playing soccer. They got oh, ballet. Yeah. They don't have ballet. I mean, if you're a, a woman with children school age, you have your head like about ready to explode. Like oh, you don't sure. know whether you're coming or going. And so a lot of them have said to me, I normally a lot of, these ladies I was talking to, they would be table leaders, but they're like, I just don't even know what's happening. I mean, like, I have to be my kid's teacher. So we're going to offer a personal study option this year, which okay. is sign up and get the book, and we will assign a leader to you, someone that will contact you, 
and help you get started. So for someone who has never really opened the Bible, you know, if you've been Catholic for years, you've gone to Mass, you've heard the Bible read to you. Sure. But if someone says, find Ephesians 4, 3, you're like, mm. So we will, we do at the beginning of each year at Walking With Purpose, kind of like, how do you work the Bible? Sure. Ask, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, like it's got an Old Testament, New Testament, it's got a table of contents. And one of my favorite little things I learned from someone else, like if you want to do um, Galatians, Ephesians. Philippians, Colossians. Go eat G. E. popcorn. Power. Oh, GE Power Company. I have Go Eat Popcorn. Go Eat Popcorn. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's better than GE Power. To- look it's at food, this thing. Right. I love popcorn. GE <laughs> so Power Company. We Go help eat popcorn. people. Yeah, yeah, we help people figure that out. So if you want to do this and you've never done it, we're going to assign you a leader person who will help you get going. And then every two weeks or so, set up an appointment to call and just check in with you. How's it going? Nice. And... Like when I'm doing a study, I read with a highlighter. Um, so, you know, encouraging them. So the stuff that's really speaking to you, highlight it. And when your leader calls you, then you guys can kind of talk about the stuff that was jumping out at you. And, you know, why do people go to like Weight Watchers? You go and get weighed in because you have to be accountable. Yeah. So to have, do this on your own because you don't feel like you could sign up for a group because you just don't know what your life's doing in terms of time. Um, at least you know someone's going to check in on you every couple yeah. weeks, which will help you get to it. Because it's really set up so that we create the habit of 15 to 20 minutes of prayer and scripture each day. Nice. Um, but, you know, human nature is, if I'm meeting on Wednesday morning, on, Thursday, on Tuesday night, I'm like doing it all. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the goal is to develop that habit. And, you know, when you do develop that habit, and you spend time with the Lord, and you learn how to pray, what you find is what the scripture talks about over and over again. I came that your joy would be full. Peace I leave with you. The peace and the joy from being coming yes. more intimate with the Lord is what we all need. Yes. So the book we're doing this year is called Grounded in Hope. And it's really funny. We decided on that study before COVID hit oh, in wow. January. But Grounded in Hope, like what do we need right now? We need hope. Yes. I mean, we need hope. For so on so many fronts. Absolutely. So I just felt like the Holy Spirit confirmed what we as a group had chosen, grounded in hope. So the study is grounded in hope. One and, of the things we're seeing here is uh, some of our tribe would really like to be a part of this. Right. And especially, and make sure I'm right, if it's Zoom, it doesn't matter. Like We have a lot of family here watching from the U.K., Right, mm-hmm. which is uh, UK means uh, uh, Unka Kunka Bunka, I think. Is that it? No, <laughs> United Kingdom. Oh. Uh, but uh, they can sign up for this, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I can put the link on my Facebook page with your mm-hmm. permission. Yeah, please. And then you can sign up and join this amazing woman and her group led by the Spirit uh, trying to get us all that much closer. The thing, I, for me personally, it's like I have a sister-in-law that lives over by Lakeside Mall. I think her mother is watching right now, actually. Oh, nice. Um, well, I've hey, always Mom. wanted to invite her. Yeah. But, like, it's an hour each way, and she has three kids, and she sure. works. Like, how's that going to happen? Right. But now she can zoom right in. So, so it's an Jesus example wants. of how God takes something that is a disaster and turns it into something good. Yeah. And uh, so I think if I'm hearing you right, somebody can, when I put the link up, when we get the information, we'll put the link on my Facebook page, but most importantly on Holy Family, mm-hmm. Church of the Holy Family's Facebook page. And ladies, you can sign up. And you can and bring your part. sister or your aunt or somebody somebody that you've always wanted to invite who lives in Philadelphia. I mean, right. I mean it's a great way to evangelize. They want to know if they can get the book in the UK. Well, I'm thinking you just go online. To, they're all going to get a link to go to Walking With Purpose and sign up, so I see no reason why you can't order it and have it delivered no, anywhere in the world. Is. I do know that the book is $40. So I also know that if there is someone who that would be the reason they couldn't do this, that we have some scholarships. They just mm-hmm. need to reach out to me. Yeah, could you be sure and do that? Because we have resources here, and we don't care if you're not a member of the parish. That's true. That's and, what I wanted people to know. Yeah. Was like Sometimes they think, well, that's a, do you have to be a member of that church? This is about an opportunity to grow in Christ. You don't need to yeah. be a member of this church. This yeah. is a great way that we as a church evangelize. And you know what's funny? I Just as a side note, and I, and I need you all to hear this, because you're members of our digital parish, right? Mm-hmm. That, um, to me, one of the most dangerous things that a pre- traps a priest can fall into is I'm going to grow our parish because uh, that's about ego, right? No, the goal is just be holy. 
and God will take care of growth that needs to happen. Or because God's not a numbers guy, it seems to me. And uh, because if so, Jesus was a disaster. (laughs) <laughs> you know, really. I mean, he was awful at this, um, if it's about numbers. And so, you know, in this regard, we don't care if you're a member of our parish family because we're a member of the body of Christ. Right. And we don't care if they're Catholic even, right? You do no. not have to be Good Catholic Lord. to join this yeah. study. Um, I will tell you it is Catholic. Yeah, and no right. Rastafarians. It is Catholic. <laughs> I don't even know But what that, that doesn't mean you'd have to be Catholic to be part of it. Right. Right. So hear that, guys. And we're not going to try to convert anybody no, or any such thing. No, it would just be sharing thing. the fullness of the truth where, of the faith. I mean, yeah. Christianity goes back to the original church being the Catholic Church. And, and although, to be clear, while we're not going to try to convert anyone, if five Protestants do become Catholic, she does get a toaster oven signed by the Pope. <laughs> and uh, we're excited about this program. <laughs> I don't want a toaster oven. Give me something better. Yeah, I don't know where I came up with that. Truly, I, I, you know, I know some part of it is watching something on TV where you could win a prize, and you know, when you're watching, you always think that could I could do it. Well, you know what? Years ago, if you opened a bank account, they'd give you like a toaster. That's That's what I'm saying. And it just felt like one of those things where it's like, you know, it's like good news, you won something. Bad news, it is a toaster oven. It's just. (laughs) Be happy you want yeah, something. Yeah, uh, but before we wrap out, um, oh, wrap up. Um, okay, oh, I see. What about the gentleman? Um, we don't care about you. Not today. <laughs> no, uh, I think, you know, to some extent, I'd like to talk, like Deacon Denny and I were, uh, you know, Holy Deacon Denny, I love him. We were doing a Bible study together before the covid yeah. You gotta say the COVID, okay. just so you know. You Them's know what? The rules. I got a cuter. My kids came up with it. The Roni. The Roni. I love it. The Roni. Ow. You know they shaved my chest today, part of it. I got an echocardiogram, whatever it's called. Well, you're glad and they did that instead of just sticky that sticky stuff yeah, around all the hair. But now oh. it's like all itchy. Yeah. This <laughs> well, poor girl. it in patches. Of course. Right. <laughs> and this poor girl, she gets this little thing out. I'm like, y'all need weed whacker. <laughs> She's just like this little sprite with like this cheek bick razor. And I'm like, sis, that ain't going to get done. I don't have a wife to like make me take care of myself. And uh, anyway, so gents, uh, know this. It's my hope that Holy Deacon Danny and I can continue our Bible study at some point. We really experienced some joy in that. And, and we got great turnout before the Rona. Rony. Rony. Like macaroni. Yeah. It's I the like Roni. It. <laughs> it's just such a cute name for something. So <laughs> we got to laugh. We have to. We have to live in joy. Yes. And, yeah, I almost want to. Like, oh. We are not a victim of our circumstances. No. We serve God and we live in joy. Yesterday. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to put this on my Facebook page. The Part of the problem is going to be remembering it. But Cardinal Sarah, I don't know if you're familiar with him. All this guy does is hit home runs, okay? And he said something two days ago that, I'm not kidding, it almost crushed me, the beauty of it. And I, I mean, I read it, and I stopped, and I cried. And then I read it again, and I just, I just soaked in it. So I'm going to try to find this. But he talks about that. His... I'm not going to say it well. That's why he said it. And I'm, in, you know, but he was like, it's not our job to save this culture. It's not our job to save the U.S. It's not our job to fight to stay alive. It's our job to tend to the fire God placed in us. I, I'll put it up. But I did notice, you know, uh, I, I pray I say this well. You know, with what we've got in our culture right now, we have normalized a terror response. Mm-hmm. And and we've pretended, now hear me out before you get all freaky, I get the emails, right? Uh, we've normalized then only giving ourselves to extremes. Either be reckless and not um, a member of the tribe or be terrified all the time and police everyone and make sure they're following. Somewhere between those two crazies, and, and I'm calling them crazies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's both probably, extremes. It's extreme. Either yeah. it's extreme. And I urge us to remember those two extremes aren't your only options. Right? This is what Americans have got to learn before we burn ourselves to the ground. 
that, uh, you know, like you put something up and you say, it's not a good idea to kill babies, right? And then it's, children in cages. Yeah, I hate that too, right? It's not all or nothing. Yes. It's, it's yes. exactly. man, guys, let's all simmer down, right? And turn off the crazy people who want us crazy because mm -hmm. then we spend more and we're easy and to read. Ask the Lord to help us see other people the way he sees them and love them the way he loves them. Yes. Can and you know what? It? If you start asking him for that, oh, I know. you get it. <laughs> you do not have because you do not ask. There was a church I was at and I was serving for a weekend. I had all the masses. And I feel awful for what I'm going to start with. It ends well. <laughs> so right before the first mass, this guy pulls me aside and he's clearly quite excited and he tells me, Father, I sing at all the masses. I'm like, sweet. And then the first mass started. And it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> and it was sitting there, you know, where you can see the congregation is used to this method of torture. Uh, <laughs> but it's new torture to me. And so the first mass, I'm just like, all right, it's what's happening. I'm good at this. I am. I'm good at just going, okay, this is where I am. And I might as well be happy in it. Second mass, we're getting to irritation. Third mass, it was all I could think about was how awful, right, this music was. And then right in the middle of it, I'm dead serious, as clear as a bell, and I'm going to cry, the Lord said, that's my boy. That's my son. And I prayed, I will never forget this. Jesus, let me hear what you hear. And did it change? It was glorious. And people saw me begin to cry. Because for like four seconds, maybe five, I heard the angels. And oh, I yeah. mean it. I mean it. Thank and you. I felt such shame for my human standard. Uh, because I've heard music sang beautifully by awful humans. But I then realized what it sounds like when beautiful humans sing and it's awful. Uh, <laughs> the glory of that. Mm -hmm. And I... I and the courage to just get up and go, I'm putting it out there. Yep, there's probably people with better voices, but they don't love God you know, as much as me. Make a joyful noise <laughs> yep. unto the Lord. And oh, you know. I'll never <laughs> I forget I love praise that. and worship. My voice isn't so good, but, you know, it's a noise. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm so grateful you came today. Thank you. This Thank was you a great me. hour. And, uh, folks, please pay attention to the... Church of the Holy Family Facebook page or my page. I'll try to get that Cardinal Sarah quote up. And we will certainly get the walking with purpose, uh, the hope. Um, yeah. uh, grounded uh, in hope. Grounded in mm -hmm. hope. We'll get those links up, ladies, so that you can jump on. You don't need to be Catholic. You don't need to be a member of Holy Family or St. Mark. And if you want to be a part of that, but that Bible cost is prohibitive. We promise we get it. We want to help. Don't you dare walk away from this because of something as silly as money. Okay? We can we can help. We can help. I just stole my dad's credit card. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he'll get points. Oh, yeah. You know, getting credit card points, points and yeah. Jesus points. Uh, okay, that's double dipping. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Baby powder. Okay, thank you, baby powder person. <laughs> but I'm going to wrap us up with a prayer now, okay. if you don't mind. Okay. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget, pop in tomorrow at noon. We're going to wrap up Christeros. And then if I have time for uh, questions unrelated to Christeros, I'll take them. As well as, of course, taking the ones related to it. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Let's pray. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, your word is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. Wherever our life has taken us to this moment, we trust you use for your glory. Everything belongs. What we ask for now is that you bless all those who hunger for your word, Lord, who hunger for your sacrament, we, bless, we ask that you bless all of our family and friends, the people and circumstances that we fret about. We ask for a great trust in your providence. And we ask these things and we promise you that we love you and we trust you.
Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vicki. You're welcome.